Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Welcome to Roll for Crit. Today we're looking at the digital adaptation of Spirit Island from Greater Than Games and Handelabra. In this game, there is an island and colonizing invaders are coming in to try to build up their towns and drive away the natives who are living there. The players are working together as ancient spirits who have different elemental powers and their goal is to stop those invaders and protect the island and its natural habitat. You'll be playing cards from your hand with various effects, including damaging invaders, moving pieces around the board, and generating fear, which will help make your win condition easier to attain. As the game goes on, you'll also be gaining new cards, getting more energy to spend, and becoming stronger and stronger. We like this game a lot. So we are very excited to try out the digital version. And it has most of the fixings that you'd want, in particular, a tutorial mode because this is a very complicated game, so it's nice to have a tutorial help explain it to you rather than someone trying to go through the entire rulebook and explain everything horribly like I usually do. After you get through the tutorial mode, which is long, you do have multiple options. You can do a quick play, which pretty much randomly sets up the game for the number of players you want, or you can do a full setup where you can be like, I'm looking for three players and we want these kinds of spirits and this kind of invader. There are also some options where you can change the visual effects or make the board look a little different. But other than that, it's what you'd expect from the base game. Same base spirits and invaders that you can choose to play with. They are definitely working on adding the expansions into the digital version of the game, uh, but none of that is in there just now. So we just got to play around with all the base stuff that there is, as you said. And another, probably to me, the biggest thing that this version of the game doesn't have uh, is multiple multiplayer. There's no online multiplayer. I guess theoretically you could, if you were at the same computer or if you were doing remote play, you could have people controlling different spirits from the same game if yes. you were together. There but is there, a pass and play, I believe right. what it would be what called. But there isn't like a specific, it's not like there's a button that says multiplayer mode. It's that you would have to, you kind of are doing that on your own. Whereas otherwise you're doing the thing where you either are controlling one spirit or you can control uh, multiple spirits. Right. Depending on how no complicated you want. AI it. that will control some of them for you. You either control multiple spirits or you're going to pass the mouse, the screen, whatever it be to other players. And when you do play with other spirits, I'm going to say the screen gets a little cluttered. I tried with three spirits and like uh, there was a lot on there, mm -hmm. which really made me wish because this is such a great game. I love this game, especially for multiplayer. It's like this would be perfect for online, especially now. And the fact that we couldn't just hook up and be like, all right, let's play online. And that way I see all my stuff on my screen, but Jonathan sees his on his screen. You know, would have helped declutter the screen and also make it so we could play it more often. Yeah, the thing that was so great about Physical Spirit Island to me uh, is it's a co-op game where everyone has so much to worry about. You're doing your own thing that it's not as much about like no one person can really micromanage everything that's going on. Uh, it's re it's really sometimes you'll say, oh, could anybody, is there a chance maybe you could use your power to help me out next turn, something like that. Uh, but Having to manage, I'm not someone who ever played the solo version of the physical game. I think maybe you you have. Before. I did, yeah. In fact, um, I no, I didn't do it for a stream, but uh, I did during this <laughs> when we've been locked in. <laughs> yeah, so so that was a new experience for me, and controlling more than one spirit, I found really difficult, and specifically. This there's no kind of um, campaign or story mode in this, which is fine. But what I think I would have appreciated is at least something where it was like, all right, your first game, you just have this spirit. And then in your next game, you're going to use a different one. And now for your third game, let's bring both of those spirits together, especially for a new player, which I'm not. But because the spirits all work very differently and they have their own unique cards, uh, figuring out what is in each uh, spirit's deck and which ones work well together and when you 
should upgrade to what is a lot. And for it to just jump in, the default is like, yeah, you played the tutorial, you're good to go. Do you want to play with like three spirits, four spirits? Go for it. And that to me was like, whoa, <laughs> there's so much happening. I don't know how to handle it. Uh, but outside of that, like in terms of what they did bring over, the core experience of how the game works and how the pieces look, and there's little animations uh, that are simple but effective. I thought all of that was done really, really well. I just wish that I could do it with other people. Yeah, that animation in particular, I think it secretly makes the ocean spirit better uh, because the ocean spirit likes to drag people into the ocean and drown them. And usually <laughs> the animation for removing things is it just sinks into the ground. So seeing the people sink into the ocean, like it's not a mechanical thing, <laughs> but it feels really awesome. I think... Yeah. If it had that online bonus and obviously getting all the expansion stuff in there because those add some cool stuff, the game would be perfect. Uh, this is a game that works so well digitally because it would be one that I could sit down for a few hours with like Jonathan or any of my other friends and, be, and play through this because it is helpful. The animations are really cute. I love uh, when you play with certain spirits and you actually drag the, where you're going to affect them. The arrow isn't just like a solid green line. It's like if you're playing with the water spirit, it looks like mm -hmm. water. Playing with fire, it's going to look like fire. And that feels... Very nice. I just wish I could just not have to be in the same room with people. And I, I suspect, you know, this was a crowdfunded project. So some of it might just be simply budget that they just didn't get enough money to have all that in. And maybe hopefully over time, they'll add that back in. But I do agree. I love all the things that you mentioned uh, because the base game is fairly complicated and there's a lot going on. And it is really nice to have a digital version where you can very clearly see those things coming in and, like you said, dragging the powers to where they're, exactly they're going to go and um, adding your little touches to, you know, putting your damage where you want your damage to go. Because this is definitely a game that in real life you might forget something. You might say, oh, wait, they were supposed to be building here this turn, uh, not exploring there. I messed that up. Or, oh, there should have been like two extra invaders in that spot. I missed that one little thing. Uh, it's really nice to have all of those things automated. Mm -hmm. No. So, so it, I appreciate it, that a lot. In fact, I remember playing through it and being like, did I do that when I did single player? Did I forget that rule? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. And the tutorial's long, but it's needed for this game. It's and a good, I think it is a very good tutorial. No, in fact, one of the things I really like that they did is something you didn't, I don't think they needed to, or I can't think of another tutorial. So it's like, what happened if you did nothing? And just shows how the invaders can just spawn everywhere. Right. It introduces everything to you. It's not like, all right, here's the whole game. We're going to go through a whole turn. Instead, it sets it up before it introduces to you the concept of what you can even do. It, it basically shows you the stakes of what you're facing. And I thought that was a, a pretty clever way to, to do things. Crits and misses for Spirit Island Digital. Crits. The tutorial lays the game out for you clearly with careful and well-prepared instructions, whether you're a newcomer to the game or someone who just needs a reminder. This is a very complicated game, and I think the tutorial was spot on. The overall presentation is very strong with a nice mix of thematic elements as well as pieces modeled directly after the game itself in its physical form, and it makes it very easy to be able to tell what's going on and where things are supposed to go while you're playing. You add those extra little bits of flair to show off that you're playing, obviously, with a water spirit or that the models stand out in the different terrains. It's a small but very nice visual important detail. There's a save function, so you don't have to play through an entire game in one sitting, which is very helpful as Spirit Island games can go on for somewhat of a long time. For some people, maybe you need to stop and take a quick break, so it's nice to be able to come back without losing progress. Misses. The biggest and most important miss is gotta be the lack of an online mode. This is a great cooperative multiplayer game, and not being able to play with people who aren't in the same room with you is just such a huge loss. I'll just emphasize that point. It is very disappointing to not be able to play this with people because the real focus of the core original game was all about cooperating with your friends, and it's just not the same cooperating with yourself. The screen can get crowded really fast. This is a game that has a lot of information and it's really hard to just keep track of everything yourself and for them to try to show it all up on the screen sort of clogs up the screen with lots of different symbols and cards and other effects. It would be a little bit easier if someone else had their own little viewing area. 
Of course, you can click to view and enlarge the different cards, but with so much on screen at one time, it can be overwhelming. I love Spirit Island, and I still loved playing this. Obviously, I regret not being able to use some expansion stuff, but, I mean, this is the base that just came out. I'm not going to expect them to have that stuff just yet. However, I do think that online mode is probably even more important to work on than I think some of the base, not, not base, the expansion stuff, because that simple option pretty much clears out both of our misses. Obviously, the one about online, but if I was playing online with, for example, Jonathan and someone else, I could maybe only see my spirit, and I just have to ask Jonathan, Jonathan, can you push those invaders away, or how much do you have enough energy to deal with stuff? And that would clear up the screen and not make it feel as clogged. I can have my own cards look pretty big, because I don't know about you, Jonathan, but any kind of cooperative game... I like to maybe look at my own cards, even if it's not my turn, to think like, okay, I might need to do that on my turn. And Spirit Island is definitely one where I want to do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty complicated game. There's a lot going on, and it's one that is perfect for a digital adaptation for that reason. So I'm really glad that they made this. And I think this made differ depending on what kind of a person that you are because you know i've seen plenty of uh tons of positive reception for this scheme and if you're okay with that solo mode and especially if you are someone who has played the physical version and you're more experienced and you're uh, more of a hardcore player and you're totally cool managing multiple spirits you're gonna find plenty of things to love in this version that'll let you play the game that you love more easily but for me at least personally uh, not having the multiplayer mode, that really is where I enjoyed Spirit Island. And not having that in it is a huge knock against the game for me. And that, like, that's if there were multiplayer, then I would be excited to come back to this and be able to play it more often with, with a couple of friends. But without that, there aren't exactly too many. It's there, like I said, there's no kind of progression mode. There's no, there are achievements on, on the Steam. It's Steam, so you do have achievements you can strive for. But outside of that, I didn't find too much of a reason to come back to it, not being a big lover of that solo version of the game. I do enjoy the solo mode a bit. I think it's a lot of fun. And I mean, I love this game, but it's still just, I think that online would make the difference of making like, it's a good digital version to like, this is a must have digital version. It's yeah. a sm it's such a big difference, and especially now. In fact, even if it wasn't now where we couldn't get together, a game like this, being able to be like, hey, you want to try Spirit Island because it's a longer game. We don't have to meet up with each other. Or if like you're new, there's a great tutorial to go you through. It's like it has almost everything but that one online thing. It's like a stain on a shirt. It's very <laughs> glaring. It's a hard thing. It's hard to, you know... Uh, criticize them too much because I know online infrastructures and dealing yeah, with I'm, servers and it's, it's hard to set up that multiplayer aspect. So uh, I don't fault them too much for it, but it, it is what it is. You know, it really it just comes down to, are you okay with that? And if, if you are, if you're ready to just play this uh, by yourself, then yeah, go, go all in, go for it. You're going to have a good time. Well, you could also be living with people who are with you, so then you can just play with them, and then that sort of solves that problem. But That's true, a little bit. It's, st it's still a little tricky because then, you know, you, you probably only have one mouse, so you're still, like, <laughs> sharing and, like, hold on, I want to look at my cards now. I'm going to look at mine. It's still a little messy, but, yeah, there are, there are options. There's also the, um, there's, like, the hot seat thing on Steam. You can remote share with, I think, with your other Steam friends. Uh, that is an option. I have not tried that, so I don't know exactly how well it works, but that, that might work for you as something you can try. Uh, so Spirit Island, it's on Steam right now, and there's going to be more updates coming. Uh, we know those expansions are on the way, so who knows? That multiplayer mode could come at some point in the future as well if the game continues to sell. Take a look at it. Let us know what you think in the comments, uh, how you feel the game plays compared to the original, and if you're a big solo or multiplayer fan one way or the other, if you feel strongly about it. Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Roll for Crit. If you want to help out, you can check out our Patreon, or a simple click to like and subscribe can go a long way. We really appreciate everything that you can do for us. We love you.